Welcome to Sons of God. Today, I want to share with you something that I have shared with you before, but it keeps getting flagged on YouTube for a copyright issue. Well, I know the artist, but evidently that's not good enough because he gave me permission. So anyway, I just don't know about those technical things too well. Anyway, so I'm doing it again, and hopefully um, you'll watch it again. Um, okay, so it is pressing into the spirit the biblical way because a lot of people press go into the spirit but it's um not always biblical and we can get in big big trouble okay so um one of the main things is i know if any of you have been watching any of my videos you probably heard this a million times but it's worth hearing a million and ten times because it's um, a, a basic foundational uh, truth that separates, that literally separates the truth from a lie and from the spirit of truth from a spirit of error. And we don't want to get in error because it, sometimes you get in error and it's very difficult to get untangled from it. So to stay away from that and, and literally have a line drawn in the sand is spirituality is worshiping through the Word of God and worshiping Father, the Lord Jesus, Holy Spirit, and waiting upon Him and measuring everything that you may hear, that you may see, that you may perceive, that you may behold um, uh, by the Word of God. Otherwise, you must discard it. You must discard it. I can't tell you how many times I've read the Bible and um, you know, I have a friend and I go through a, a lot of stuff with her and I will say, hey, what do you think about da 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 da? And she will say, no, because over in da 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 da, it says this. And you're like, you're right, out. And so you have to have a humble heart and a teachable spirit. And you know what? We're, we're all learning. And life on this earth is a learning journey. No matter how far advanced you've gone or if you're just beginning or somewhere in the middle, we are learning. And we are susceptible to um, error. Just because the enemy comes around like a roaring lion seeking who he may devour. And he tries to do that. And in a video, an up and coming video that I'm about to do, I'm going to share with you um, some of that, just about that, what Father has taught me about that. But anyway, so we have to be able, no matter where we are, to say, oh, yeah, that's not. And throw it away. It's not a pride issue. It doesn't mean everything you've learned is wrong. It just means you have to sometimes pick out the weeds and then maybe sometimes find out where that where did that weed come from and root it out. Anyway, so spirituality is literally worshiping the Lord and waiting upon him and 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 be being willing to wait upon him like Moses did. I mean, could you just imagine Moses sitting up in Mount Sinai in that mountain? It was probably very dark and he just sat there while the children of Israel were at the bottom at the lowest part, the Bible says, in the nether part, that's the lowest, lowest part of the mountain, doing all kinds of stuff. And Moses just sat there just sat there waiting on the Lord and waiting one day, two day, three day, four day, five day, six day, seven day, eight day, waiting and waiting on Father and not trying to stand up and move in his own understanding or his own um, um, strength to try to like help God out like Saul did. Okay, so we don't do that. We wait because Father will come. He will come if we wait. I waited for 30 years, and I know some of you are like, well, I've been waiting. Um, but, but one day, one day, after, I'll, I'm, I'm going to share with you right now, 
the process of how I waited and one day he came and one day he just kept coming and I want that to happen for everybody I mean as much as possible because father does comes when the people prepare themselves and make themselves ready for him when they sanctify themselves and sanctify the Lord in the sight of everybody else okay I'm not the greatest at that I will admit but I'm learning I am learning and um, I pray that we can learn this together because I have learned a tiny bit and that tiny bit translates into a whole lot when you start reading the Bible because if you understand this piece and you say oh when you get over here it it makes this piece much easier to understand and then you understand this piece and this piece and you come over here and you go well that's that because that's that and that's that and the Bible like one big beautiful mosaic picture um, starts to come together with all these pieces of understanding that Father gives you and then suddenly we start to understand and start to make progress in this journey from like the children of Israel from the Jordan the River Jordan and then to um, Bethel and Gilgal and Jericho and, and then across the river but anyway okay so the first thing the first most important thing is the Word of God is to not just read it because you know you can read it and you'll forget what you read probably in about 20 seconds if you're like me um, or you may take in a few things that really minister to you and and really set in deep inside of you but it's basically in order for you to consume it and to for it to start to transform you know there's a thing about being transformed into the image of Christ where we go to the mountaintop with Jesus and we become transfigured because it's not exactly the same thing you know one is the process of being transformed into the image of transfiguration the transfiguration as a son of God who lives on that mountaintop just like all the other sons of God just like Elijah, Enoch, Moses, Adam, Seth, um, Elisha, uh, whom you know of, all the mountaintop dwellers. Okay? So, the Word of God, you read it, but in order to consume it, have it start to transform you, you get a program, a Bible Hub. Um, I know there's other ones. I use Bible Hub because I'm just, that was sort of got hair on my eye. That was the first one that I became familiar with and I love it. I, I, I love it, love it, love it. Um, anyway, and so, goodness be, just got hair. Um, and so you start to take a sentence and if you do the drop down box of the versions of the Bibles you will see um, the King James Plus so if you click on that one you'll get King James and then any word you can it highlights you put your little mousey over it and you highlight it and it will literally if you click it you, it'll take you into the Hebrew word meaning of the word or the Greek meaning of the word the Brown's driver Briggs and all the different references then it'll have on the side all the ways that that word same word was used in other scriptures in the but it's 
I love it. And at the bottom, it has the strongs. So it's like, they, it's just, I love it. Anyway, so, and I bring notepad or, you know, sometimes just in your computer, you can do your um, word and just put like, um, Let's say if you're studying Moses, you can put Moses and then all the things that Father highlights to you in the Word as you're studying, copy and paste, copy and paste, and then an understanding Father is giving you. And, and it, starts to, it starts to become life in you, okay? Because otherwise your mind is going to come and it's going to take you to what you have to do later and it's going to the idols of this, the cares and the idols of this life and distract you just like when you're praying. So we have a way to keep you focused and it gets really exciting. So you can't wait to learn and read your word. Okay, so that is foundational. Anything that, like I said, anything that you may discover, that you may hear from the Lord, that you may see, that you may feel is highlighted, that, you know, you may hear a teaching and out of all the things they say, they say one specific thing that you're like, oh, what? That, yes! And you know, um, but whatever it is, it has to line up with the Word of God and with the Word of God. Not the teachings of man that teach the Word of God. Because sometimes from their makeup um, and their roots, the roots of man of their generations, which I've seen so much, or their college professors, their denominations, um, those teachings can be biased in the Word. So I would challenge you to look it up yourself and to let Father teach you and to be willing, be willing to be wrong or to let it go if it doesn't line up with the Word. But if it's in the Word, and not just a sentence, but in the structure of what they're saying, like the um, the fullness of the scriptures, like like you know, just not one line out of a paragraph or a chapter, but what is the fullness of what that is saying? The you know the meaning of it. Okay, so let's be reasonable and. Um, and we can't just take one scripture and build a whole doctrinal kingdom on it. Um, unless it, it, it needs to be woven. Because, you know, like the word of God has a through line. Like, you know, there's teachings there that, you know, will say, <clears throat> they'll say something and then like, uh, where else is that? What other examples are there of that? Because, no, there needs to be examples of that, you know, in the Word, okay? So there is a through line in the Bible. Father is the most brilliant of all writers. No one compares to the brilliancy, the mastery of Father God through the Holy Spirit. Nobody does. No league, nobody does only Father and He will teach you by His Spirit the truth. Okay, so now that we have that established, now we're going to go to the second stage, the second step, which is just as important except for without the first step, you really can't rely on the second. Um, you can only go so far with it. You can do it, but it will only open up so much to you. Um, and that is to worship Him. To worship Father in the Spirit. So how do we do that? Well, we get worship music. I'm not talking about praise music because praise is, you know, it's fast. We come to you with thanksgiving in our heart. Praise you. You know, that's good. That's really good. 
and God, Father loves it. But, but, when it comes time to sit with Father, when it comes time to wait upon Him, that's worship. That is gentle. That, that comes from the depths of you. That comes from your inner, your innermost being, from the depths of your being that you worship Him. And you lay it all out, humbling yourself before Him and at His feet. And you know, a lot of times, most of the time, I'll say, Father, give me a humble and a contrite spirit to worship You. And then, key, use your voice. Worship Him with all of your heart, all of your mind, and all of your strength. Worship Him. So don't just close your eyes and listen to the music and let your mind wander to all the cares of this life and all the idols. Don't do it. How do you offset that? You throw yourself into it and you worship you. I worship you. Worship him with your voice and your heart and your strength. And if you fall back from that, that is the key. Go back to throwing yourself into him at his feet. And, and what you can do is you can see just Jesus. Because the Bible says to keep your mind focused on Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. So you can just see Jesus like at his feet. You know, some days I just come to worship him and I I've had a hard time in life. I've, you know, the days have been hard and, you know, I may have failed. Um, I may feel like I've really failed him and I will see myself at his feet and just worshiping at his feet. And there are some days when I just need, I need a hug. I just need a hug. I need to be close to him. I, I need to feel close to him and I will just see myself being in his arms, holding on to him, you know, his robe. I don't move from any of those places on my own. I tell you the truth, I, I don't. I wait right there. And if you have to wait a week, a month, two months, do it. Do it and don't try to see and don't try to make anything happen. You don't try to make it happen. You yield and you wait for him. And one day, and one day, all of a sudden, this waiting like a wall a wall of division that you have waited, you have knocked at this door, and you have knocked and knocked and knocked, and all of a sudden, breakthrough. You get breakthrough in that wall. You start to get breakthrough in that wall, and that door starts to open, and suddenly he, you see him, and he moves, and he says. He may take you by your hand and show you something that you never knew. You might sense or have suddenly an understanding in your mind that you never knew. That's how it starts to work. And what I do is I bring a journal with me in prayer and my little pencil for two reasons. For one reason, the first reason is that I let him know I'm waiting on you and I'm waiting to write down everything you tell me because it is of utmost importance to me. 
And the second reason is, is so I won't forget. <laughs> because, you know, sometimes as we journey uh, day to day to day to day, you know, he may share with you something and if you don't write it down, you'll say, what was it? I mean, it just happened to me the other night. I literally was in prayer. Um, I was, you know, uh, being taught uh, stuff about Moses. And two major things. I was like, oh, but I'd forgotten to bring my journal into my prayer closet, my space. And I thought, I I'll be okay. I'm going to remember this. I'm going to remember this. I come right out of prayer, and the minute I do, I sit down with my journal, I grab it, I write down the first thing, and then I think, what was the second thing? It was gone. It was gone from my mind until um, the next day, as I was reading again the word, um, I came to a certain word, and I went, it just went, Choo! I went, oh, thank you, because I was like, Oh, please remind me. Please, I don't want to let that go. Please remind me. And he did the next day. So bring a journal. Let him know that you're waiting and that you believe him. That you trust him. And that you're going to write what he tells you is the utmost important to you. Of course, you then have to measure it with the word of God. Otherwise, you have to let it go because it's a process you know we learn discernment through practice and so you begin to recognize the voice of the Lord and the voice and the sight a vision that is true from the Lord and what is could be your imagination so we have to divide those two and we have to learn to divide the voice of our self that will even try to masquerade as God, sound like God, um, and God's true voice. But trust me, Father is faithful, and even if you do make a mistake, you'll learn. It must be in the Word. If it's not in the Word, you must rip it out. You must refuse it and reject it, okay? So, those are the first two major steps. The next step that I have found and is very important to me is that I have a spot. I realize for me that there are areas uh, of where I go to worship where Father meets me and there are areas that mm, is like like the heavens are like brass. Uh -uh. I can't get through. And so um, I realized when I moved here that I, in my last place where I lived, I worshiped in in my bedroom. I, when I first came to the Lord, it was in the bathroom because I wanted to separate from children and whatnot. So I went in the bathroom. And then in the next place, it was my bedroom, right on the floor, right near my bed. And so I, when I moved here, I just, I did the same thing, thinking I'm in my bedroom. Mm -mm. The heavens were like brass. I could not. It was like, Father. Because, I mean, if you worship him with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, you're going to at least feel him. There's, you know, there's a time in prayer where suddenly he comes. He just comes it doesn't necessarily mean that you see in visions or you even hear him speak to you, but you feel something. You feel the presence of the Spirit of the Lord. So and when you do that, if you stay focused, you will feel him. If you don't at first, it's okay because there's breakthrough. But eventually, you will at least experience that. Well, I wasn't experienced that. Now, I've been doing this for 30 years. So, um, I, you know, I'm not a baby in it. Um, I, I, I know there are lots of people that are so much more advanced and uh, been doing it much longer, worshiping Father and um, being in his kingdom. But nonetheless, I'm 30 years, and so I wasn't feeling him in my bedroom, 
So then I recognized, I remembered, oh, when I have prayer groups in my family room, I feel them. So I went to my family room and I started worshiping there and boop, the heavens opened. And uh, that's what I perceive people uh, when they say open heavens, that to me feels like an open heaven uh, because that's my spot. Uh, in my church, I had a place um, where I would go to on the floor, off to the side, kind of, you know, in the front, but off to the side. That was my spot. And when I get on my knees and I just let it go, let myself go, um, it's right there. And he, he just comes. And so why would I waste time? Time is precious for everybody. So anyway, um, that's another thing. Don't think that anybody's watching you. They're not. They're not. And if they are, be an example. Show them. Be free. Just be free. It's the one time in your life that you get to be you. Just you. And loved for you. You know, when I started thinking about doing these videos, because, you know, I started to do them at one point, and Father told me, stop. I know now why. But... I wasn't ready, but it was two years later, two and a half years later, and I, he started saying to me, you're ready, go, you can start, and so I was like, but Father, I'm not a scholar, I'm not good with words, and most people will look at me and discredit, discount anything that I would say because of the sound of my voice or because it would have looked like, because I'm a woman, because, because, because. And I thought, well, you know, should I um, do it like a sermon and, you know, practice this? And, you know, people tell me, you know, you know, practice makes perfect. But I felt Father say to me, Mm -mm. No, you don't. My little one, you go to them just like you are. Just like I've come to you. Because I've come to somebody that is transparent. And I, I felt like he just said, just... I've come to you the way you are. I've shown you things the way you are. I never asked you to put on any airs for me. I never asked you to try to transform yourself into an image that man would receive so I could come to you. He never said that to me. He was saying to me, you show them, you show them exactly the person that I've come to. So here I am, and I'm doing it. And um, it's a little scary for me at times. And I take a big risk because, you know, I have, I have a lot to share with you. And I want you to listen to Father, not, not to me, but, but Christ in me. And the kingdom of God, Father, through me, what he's taught me. And so anyway, I'm just trusting him. I'm just trusting him, making myself very vulnerable and very transparent. And actually, now I kind of like it because it's very intimate. Uh, I feel like I'm talking to one person and getting to to share with you about Father and Jesus and the Holy Spirit and the angels of God and the prophets that have gone before us, the spirits of just men made perfect and the whole kingdom of God and how beautiful it is and how real it is and how transparent it is. Anyway, um, I think that's it. I just wanted to share with you that biblical 
way of pressing into the spirit. And if you have anything to share with me, I would love for you to share it in the comment box. I know, you know, when I watch YouTube, I watch it on TV, so I'm not at my computer. I can't make a comment, which probably most of you do. But anyway, if you are at your computer and you want to share anything with me, do. I would love to hear it. And um, I'm going to pray for you right now. If you have not received the Lord, I want to pray with you to receive the Lord. Um, before I do, I want to pray for those of you that are watching that have received the Lord. I just want to ask you, Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, that you will help them, Father. That you would just strengthen them in their inner man, Father. To be able to walk in the Spirit, Father. That you open the eyes of their understanding, Father. That they may see in truth in the Spirit, Father. Through Jesus Christ, who is the way, the truth, and the life of the Father. Of you, Father. I pray, Father God, that you would do that for them. Father, we are in the last hour. And I just, the last days, I mean... We're so close, Father. We we're just so close. And Father, I just ask, Father, that you would strengthen them right now in spirit and in truth in the name of Jesus. I'm sorry. And Father, right now, I pray for any of those right now. If you've not received the Lord, just repeat after me. Just say these words. Say it with your heart. Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you came to this earth, that you died on the cross for all of my sins, and that you rose again from the dead, and you are seated at the right hand of Father right now, and that I can know you in spirit and in truth by the Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus, forgive me of all my sins come into my heart right now come into my heart and restore me back to the garden restore me back Lord to walk with my father in the cool of the breeze of the spirit in Jesus name I pray alright if you said that prayer let me know and Please subscribe and um, click the like button, I guess, you know. Mm. Anyway, okay, until next time, bye-bye.